All right, so I've got a problem. I've got a dorm room, and a beanbag is thrown out of that dorm. It travels a distance and strikes, the, it strikes a point that's exactly h distance. Now, that h is also referring to the height in which the beanbag is thrown out. Both of those terms are going to be h. So we're looking for this magical value in which we could throw a beanbag out, and it can hit some distance away. Now, we're not going to be able to solve for that velocity, but what we can do is we can solve for the direction of the velocity because there's going to be an infinite number of possible velocities that are going to land with this value h. What we, like I said, what we can do is we can talk about this angle. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep track of everything I know. How I do that is I make a table. I keep track of my x and my y values. This direction being x, this direction being y, okay? So everything that's happening in the y, everything that happened in the x. So what we're looking for is acceleration, velocity initial, velocity final, and then we're going to just simplify and say change of position and time, okay? So. In the x direction, in this direction, there is no acceleration. That term is zero, okay? But, excuse me, in the y direction, we have the acceleration due to gravity. 9.8, but for this problem, I'm going to simplify it to 10. The initial velocity in the x direction is an unknown, but it's the same unknown as its final velocity. Those two terms are equal to each other. Now, in the y direction, it's thrown out of the window horizontally, so its initial velocity is zero, and its final velocity is unknown. I can't say that that final velocity is equal to anything over here. I can't say it's this one or this one. All I know is that it's unknown. The position, change in position in both of them, well, in the x direction, it goes from here to here, so it's h. In the y direction, it starts from here and goes here. It's a negative term, negative h. Okay, and the time is unknown. As a matter of fact, the time is always going to be un it's going to be infinite. There's an infinite number of possible times. Okay? So from there, we're going to clean this section off and start working. What I need to do is I need to be able to solve for velocities in the x and in the y. Okay? The first well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that, well, write down my equations, I guess, is the first place I should start. V initial is equal to V final plus AT. V final squared minus, ah, here we got those flipped. V final, V initial. V final minus V initial squared is equal to two times my acceleration times my change in distance, and both of those are going to be h, regardless of the direction. Um, then I have x final minus x initial is equal to the initial t plus one half a t squared. Okay, cool. So those are my equations, and now I'm going to look at solving them. Um, we're looking at solving for velocities in given directions. So what I see in the y is that this one is going to be my equation of choice. I know acceleration, I know position, I know my initial velocity, okay? So at that point, all I'm left is this V final, exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm left with V final, and this is going to be my Y direction. So uh, let's just do it this way. V final Y is e uh, minus, or uh, squared, sorry, V initial Y is equal to two times the negative 10 meters per second per second, the acceleration due to gravity, times negative h. Got it all on there. Okay, so that goes into, well this term, sorry, squared. Um, this term drops off. So I'm left with v final y squared is equal to negative negative, those cancel off, so 20 meters per second per second times h, okay? So that means that the velocity final in the y is equal to the square root 
of 20 meters per second per second times h. All under the square root. Okay? Now, over here, we're going to be looking at the x direction. Um, I, know, I know my initial velocity. Or I don't know my initial velocity. I don't know my final velocity. I know they're equal to each other, though. Um, I know my positional value. And I know my acceleration. And I'm solving for velocities. Well, I kind of got myself a problem here. Because with the zero acceleration, this one automatically disappears. Okay? With the zero acceleration, this one automatically disappears. So I'm only left with one possible equation. So I'm looking at, well, right up here. H is equal to V initial T. Well, that sucks because I don't know T. And without T, I have no idea what V initial is. So what I got to do is I got to go back to my y-axis and solve for t. Now, the reason why I can do that is because I do know bits of information. I do know enough in my y that I can solve for t. And the amount of time it takes for an object to drop that distance h is the same amount of time that the ball is going to travel in the, in the x direction before the ball hits the ground. Okay, So looking over my equations, I had no positional value, so that's h. I know this term drops off. And I know A, but I don't know T. But T is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go back to that. So I'm left with negative H is equal to my V initial, which turns out to be 0. 0 times T is still going to be 0, plus 1 half negative 10 T squared. So negative H is equal to... Well, half of 10 is 5, negative 5 t squared, or t squared is equal to h over 5, with t equaling the square root of h over 5. Cool? Uh, I kind of got it on there. That's h over 5 over here. Okay, so that goes into there. I'm left with h is equal to v initial um, times square root of h over 5. Okay? It looks ugly, but it'll actually work itself out. So that means that v initial is equal to h divided by the square root of h over 5, or v initial is equal to h divided by the square root of h, 5h, times the square root of 5. Okay? Well, that simplifies. h over the square root of h. Well, this is 1. This is 1 half. I'm left with a half. So v initial is equal to the square root of h times the square root of 5 or is equal to the square root of h times 5. Okay. Cool. From here, I have to figure out my angle. And to do that, I need to use a little bit of trick. I'm going to clear this space off. And I'm going to clear. I've got that. I need this. Everything else is irrelevant at this point. Uh, that's why I hate using these black markers. They always smear. Okay? Oh, I guess I don't even need this. So, what we have, we have a velocity here which is entirely in the x. And that velocity is equal to h times the square root of h times 5. And I have a velocity here that's equal to the square root of 20 times h. Okay? And then there's a meters per second associated with that. You carry out the units, you'll find that they're a meter per second. What I'm trying to do is to solve for that angle. Okay? What I have is I have an opposite and an adjacent. 
So, looking at my trig functions, cosine, sine, well, let me write it up higher. So I've got sine theta, cosine theta, tan theta. The only real things you need to know from trig. Opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent. Well, this one works. I have the opposite, I have the adjacent. So I end up with the square root of 20h over the square root of 5h. I just move those terms around. That's really my answer right there. Now, I can simplify it. Absolutely, I can simplify it. I can square the whole term. Um, this is equal to tan theta. Or I can just simply solve. At that point, I just put it in my calculator. One thing I do notice is that goes away. One thing I do notice is that the square root of 20 over the square root of 5. That's going to be the square root of 20 over 5, which is going to equal 4, which is going to equal 2. So I'm looking at the tan theta. It gives me 2, or theta is equal to tan inverse of 2. Okay? That's going to give me my answer. I don't know what exactly that is. I don't have my calculator.